Hi, I'm José Valim, and today I want to kick off Livebook's first launch week ever. So for those who are not familiar, Livebook is a computational notebook platform. You can use it to automate code, data, and machine learning applications. And we have just announced Livebook 0.9, and there are so many exciting features in this release that we decided to do our first launch week. And the idea is that starting today, today is the first day, we are going to do an announcement showing some new features or new things that you can do with this Livebook release. So let's get started. So the goal for today is to show some of the minor changes in Livebook, but also talk about the biggest feature in this release, which is the ability to deploy notebooks as applications. And that's the feature that I'm going to show today. And throughout the week, we are going to build more exciting stuff on top of it. So in order to get us started, uh, I have here two Livebook running on two different browser tabs. I have the main one here, and I have this one on the side, which we are going to use to see how Livebook can be used for building collaborative applications, all right? And if you ran Livebook before, as soon as you see this page, you already see that things are different. So one of the features that we added is exactly that now you can star notebooks. So let's do that. I'm going to create my first notebook. This is going to be, um, since we're, we want to deploy our application, let's say this is going to be our first application. So uh, my first app. And now I'm going to save this to disk. So let's call it my first app as well. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead and start the notebook and you can see that it immediately appears on the homepage. So this is very handy. If you have like workflows that are running all the time, you can go fork and start a new session. Or if there is an app that you're building slowly, you can start it and come back to it whenever you want. But also what we've did to the homepage is that we have also like centralized all the ways to open up new notebooks in the new open page. And we also added a session on recent notebooks, which is very handy because Livebook auto saves your work, but sometimes, um, you know, you would like close Livebook, forget to save something that you know, and then you're like, where was it auto saved? And now with the recent notebooks, it's very easy to find those things back. So again, small changes, but I think uh, the community has asked for them. So I think it's like, it's really going to help uh, everybody's workflows. So yes, those are some of the changes. Another feature that we added that the community has asked for it a couple of times is the ability to collapse sections. So as you get like larger and larger notebooks, um, you want to collapse some of the sections so you can focus on particular parts and this feature is there as well. But let's move to the, to the main course here, which is the ability to deploy apps. And in order to show uh, how to deploy apps, I'm going to build a chat app, okay? And I know this is a little bit cliche, but I think it's really important because you're going to build like a chat app in like 10 to 15 lines of code, which is really amazing. And I think it shows the power of Livebook. Like Livebook is not only itself collaborative, but the applications that you can build with it are collaborative too. And I think that's really important. And that's a feature that you won't find easily elsewhere. Right, so let's do that, right? So if you wanna build a chat application, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to add Kino as a dependency. Like every time you want to do animate anything in Livebook, we need the Kino package. So I'm just going to uh, do that. I'm going to add Kino and let's install it. And now that it is installed, uh, our chat app is basically two things, right? It's the frame where we're going to render the messages and it's a form that is where you're going to put your name, the message you want to submit and send that to the app, right? So let's do that. I'm going to, first let's create the frame. So let me focus here and, and you can see, right? Like how everything's collaborative as we are doing changes here, it's replicating there. So that's pretty neat. So I'm going to create a frame. Initially there is nothing uh, on the frame. We are going to push messages to it, to it soon. And the other thing that we want to do is that we want to, to have some inputs and generate a form, right? So one of the inputs is going to be uh, the name. So let's say I want a Kino uh, input, which is text and is going to be my name. And then I want to have the message as well, which I'm going, let's do a text area for this one. So it's going to do a message. And now that I have two inputs, I could like listen to each input individually, but what I want to do 
is that I'm going to create a form and get all the data at once. So let's do a form, which is a Kino control and a form, and it's going to have two inputs, so name and then the message. So those keys here is how you're going to receive the data, data later on, okay? We also want to have a submit button, which we're going to call send. And every time we submit the form, I want to reset, I think it's reset on submit. We can check that really quickly. Let's mouse over here and reset on submit, perfect. So we're going to do reset on submit on the message, right? We want to, let me format this. So we want to keep the name, but we want to reset the message. And if we do this, we got our form. So things are starting to take shape and we can, now we just need to wire everything up by saying, well, uh, I want to listen to the form events. So we can listen to any enumerable and the form is an enumerable, we can, we can receive the events. And what it's going to remit, it's a data. And on this data, we are going to have exactly the keys that we defined here. So we're going to have the name, we are going to have the message. And another key that we have here is the origin, which we're going to use later, okay? So I'm going to receive those events. And when we get those events, we want to do two things, right? So one is that we want to render some content and we are going to use markdown for this. So we're going to say, um, well, the we want to, let's print the name in, in bold and then print the message, which means we get like markdown formatting for free in here. And once we do that, I we want to do a kind of frame append. We want to append to the frame the content, the markdown content that we created. And that's it. So if I evaluate this, origin is not being used, that makes sense. So if I evaluate this and I come back to the form here, so let's say uh, I am Joe, and then I can say, hello, Robert. And when I submit this, you can see that the message comes here at the top, but I can also come here on the side, say, look, I am Robert, and I can say, hello, Joe, right? And it just works, that's it. We've built our chat app. Of course, like there are improvements that we could do. So for example, uh, currently we can submit empty messages. So we could add a check in here and say, look, if name is different than an empty list and the message is different, not an empty list, sorry, an empty string, right? We, we do this. Otherwise, what we want to do is that we want to render an error and I want to do that in italics saying, uh, name and message are, are required. But if we're going to render an error, I don't want to append this to everybody, right? So that's where origin is handy. This is a new feature in Livebook 0.9. I can say, look, I just want to send this to whoever is submitted this event. And now that I do this, and if I click it's empty, we can see that the message appeared here, but it did not appear to Robert, right? So this is really nice, really, you know, we are exactly 15 lines of code to build a very quick uh, chat app. And the cool feature now in Livebook 0 0.9 is that we can deploy it. So I can come here to the app settings. I can give it a name, uh, my chat app. We don't want this to be password protected. We want to allow the, somebody to download the source, the notebook source if they want, and we're going to deploy it. And then as soon as we deploy it, it's running on a URL here. I can join right uh, from both things. I can do the same thing. So one's going to be Joe. Uh, let's say, hello, Robert. Um, now let's have Mike joining on this one. And he's going to say, hello, Robert as well. And boom, and then more people can join and that's it. You built a collaborative chat app and you can now deploy it with Livebook in just 15 lines of code. So we are of course very excited about this and the possibilities that is going to bring, how easy it is to make collaborative apps. And of course, if you don't want it to be collaborative, right? Something that you can do is just put two on everybody and then your app is no longer collaborative. Everybody just sees what they are you just render things specific to a person, but it's really nice that everything is collaborative by default. And I think that's going to enable some workflows with data and machine learning that it's not easy to build elsewhere. And this is also just the beginning. So this is 
this is going to be the end of the first day. Those video, I'm hoping those videos are going to be short. And uh, over the next days, we are going to build more on this deploy feature. We are going to see uh, how we can already deploy those notebooks to existing platforms like Hugging Face. And what we are planning for the future is to kind of have a one-click button for everything, right? So if you want to deploy this to Fly, to Hugging Face, or inside your own company, you want to have just a button that you click and it's going to be running on a separate machine magically and you don't have to worry about anything else. All right, so that's it for today and hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.